I hate to say it, but I can't rely on Southwest to get the family us home. Stranded at the airport, so many passengers here in Central Florida and across the country are dealing with delays and cancellations. Most are with Southwest. We are live with some of the new issues right now at Orlando International Airport. Plus, a deadly crash involving a semi-truck closed all northbound lanes of I-95 in Flagler County. What we know so far about this investigation. And in sports, the UCF Knights are making history on the field today, playing in their first military bowl. The milestones they hope to reach when they take the field this afternoon. Local, live, late breaking. West 2 News starts now. Another afternoon of frustration for flyers all across Central Florida and in the country. Thanks for joining us today at noon. I'm Christina Watkins. Nearly 130 flights are canceled to and from Orlando just today. Most are Southwest and these problems are causing scenes just like this all across the country. Thousands of people waiting for answers and any possible options to get back home. West News Bob Hazen joins us live at Orlando International Airport this afternoon. Bob, for people who are flying Southwest, they may not be home for another few days. That's right, New Year's Eve at the earliest for a lot of people, but in a lot of cases, their luggage has already made the trip. People like the owners of these bags back here at Orlando International, look how full this room is of luggage that made the trip here to Orlando, but the people who own them have not yet. It's just one of the major issues that a lot of people are dealing with. The Tesh family, eight of them, were supposed to be back in Utah by Christmas, but their Southwest flight on Saturday was canceled. So the first night we spent Christmas Eve and Christmas morning in the airport. Mind you, it was their six-week-old son's first Christmas. Eventually, they got a hotel for a couple days while trying to find supplies like diapers to get by. They came back today with a rebooked trip, the first leg heading to Austin. So we're just hoping that everything runs smoothly and when we get to Austin, we can get on our new flight and get home. There's some of the thousands who are stranded in Orlando because of Southwest's major problems that continue today. The lines at the airline's counter have been shorter today, but still half of its flights at OIA are canceled. We haven't had much communication with Southwest, so that's been really disappointing. I know that they're overwhelmed right now, but even they're not giving their employees any information. We also heard a new issue today. Jason Hill brought his daughter, who was supposed to fly out on Monday alone to Texas. They said, oh, sorry, no unaccompanied minors can fly. The order came from on high. There's nothing we can do about it. Her flight then was rescheduled for today, but again, she was told that she couldn't fly alone. Hill spent over an hour talking with agents before finally getting Southwest to work out a plan. They booked us on American, so now she will be able to fly to Dallas tomorrow morning. There's also a big problem with luggage. This room at OIA is full of suitcases. In some instances, the bags flew out even when their owners were stuck at airports. So you don't know where your luggage is? No idea. Southwest says it's finalizing some kind of resource that people can use to find their lost luggage. They also say customers can check with the airline's baggage service office, like this one at OIA. One bright spot for the Tesh family, their flight did take off this morning. And Southwest tells me today they are doing everything they can to make sure that people can get their bags back at no cost to the customers. And they are also saying that they will companies if needed if they need to do that to get those bags back to people. Reporting live at OIA, Bob Hazen, Washington News. I cannot even imagine, Bob. Thank you. So as we know, most of the canceled flights right now in Orlando are with Southwest. The CEO, Bob Jordan, says weather is part of the reason because two of their major hubs are in Chicago and Denver. Jordan then apologized for this. He plans to get flights back on schedule few days is to fly a reduced schedule and reposition our people and planes and we're making headway and seek to be back on track before next week. We have some real work to do in making this right. For now, I want you to know that we're committed to that. The CEO went on to apologize to Southwest Cruise as well. Nationwide, Flight Aware Tracker shows more than 2,500 
canceled Southwest flights just today. And so as travelers look to get back home, stay with West 2 for our continuing coverage. We are monitoring flight data and will keep you updated on the latest conditions at our airport on air, online at West.com and on our free West 2 News mobile app. Let's go ahead and get a check of our forecast now with first warning meteorologist Eric Burrs. We are warming up across central Florida. These temperatures this afternoon feel pretty good. Oh, and it's going to be even better and better these next couple of days. Good afternoon to you, Christina. Clear skies. It is just gorgeous. Clear visibility all the way through the metro area. We have hit 70 degrees. How about that last time? was last week and here we are on a Wednesday afternoon 68 in Leesburg 65 degrees in the villages 64 in Ocala and into the lower 70s along the Space Coast as well. First warning live Doppler radar yesterday at this time had a few passing showers moving through. That is not the case. It's hard pressed to find any cloud cover. Take a look at the wider perspective. All those beautiful lakes across showing up on the satellite imagery, just a sprinkle or two down around Palm Beach and Martin counties. That is it. So for today, bright sunshine and climbing temperatures. It is gorgeous, gorgeous weather. Our temperatures approaching the seasonal averages. But by tomorrow, by Friday, those temperatures get above average. Central Florida's certified most accurate seven day forecast taking you all the way to the new year in just a couple minutes. Eric, thank you. New today at noon, at least one person is dead after crashing with a semi truck this morning on I-95 in Flagler County. Florida Highway Patrol says they got the call around 830 this morning to I-95 just past Old Kings Road. This is in Palm Coast. All lanes heading north in this area are still shut down at this hour. If you're heading in this direction, you can always take Palm Coast Parkway to US-1. Troopers are also rerouting drivers to exit three miles before this crash site, so pay attention to that. The man accused of killing a Daytona Beach police officer was back in court today. Ulfa Wallace appeared for a case management hearing. He's accused of shooting and killing Officer Jason Rayner in June of 2021. Wallace's trial is set to begin in April. He could face the death penalty if convicted. Still ahead today at noon, help is available for any of you impacted by Hurricanes Ian and Nicole, the deadlines you need to know about. Plus, the new year means new rides at our theme parks. We've got a sneak peek at some of the big debuts coming. And it is game day for the UCF Knights. They are taking on Duke in their first appearance for the Military Bowl. It's going to be an exciting day for the Knights as they look to uh, set some records for the team. Trust. Built day by day, story by story. It's earned by listening, learning, and delivering the facts. So you can stay informed and safe. Trust is earned in the stories we tell. From Central Florida. From the nation. And around the world. Because trust matters. Trust matters. Trust matters. We work to earn yours every day. West 2 News and NBC Nightly News. Weekdays starting at 4 p.m. You're watching West 2. If you're filling up your tank today, you likely will not see prices under $3 anymore. They went up overnight, bringing our state average back up to $3 a gallon. The average price right now for regular gas here in our state is at $3.06. That is up from $2.98 yesterday. Most counties across Central Florida, according to AAA, are sitting right at $3. SpaceX is celebrating its final launch of the year from our Space Coast. Take a look. From one Florida team to another, it is game day for the UCF Knights. They are playing in the Military Bowl today, taking on the Duke Blue Devils. A win today can give UCF 10 wins for the ninth time in program history. It would also be back-to-back -back bowl wins for the Knights. You know, the thing about a bowl game is, you know, it, it finishes up the season. Ten wins is big. There's no doubt about that. But also the young guys, it's like, you know, gives them, you know, a chance to get their self ready for next year. And you all saw it last year we had with the bowl win. That was really uh, big with that. And kickoff for today's game is in Maryland. It is at 2 o'clock this afternoon, less than two hours away. Florida State is also getting ready for its bowl game. They are taking on the Oklahoma Sooners. 
Parking at Camping World Stadium is sold out for the game. If you are going tomorrow, you're encouraged to park downtown and use the free game day shuttle. It'll pick you up near the Amway Center at Church Street and Division Avenue and then drop you off near the stadium at Church Street and Nashville Avenue. Another option for you is the SunRail. You can take the free shuttle for Florida State's game tomorrow. It runs starting at noon, leaving from the Amway Center, which is right across from a SunRail station. It'll continue running until one hour after the game ends. SunRail also added a few routes after the game going both north and south. All right, 1218 on your Wednesday afternoon. We are excited for UCF today. Kickoff less than two hours away. And you're repping hard. Listen, I've, I've got the gold. I I've got the it. gold tie. I've got the pocket square. Yes. And I'm even wearing and, and only a very presenting UCF as well. I love At any tribute. rate. It's beautiful. It's, I love it's, it. It's beautiful. Yeah. It's a beautiful school as well. Maybe you want to go walk <laughs> around today. The weather is lovely. Maybe you want to go to the beach. There's another option. There's Brevard County, some cumulus clouds. Look at that water. I mean, come on. What a shade of blue today. It is gorgeous. That was our Melbourne Tower cam. So we're at 72 degrees there. It's 69 for us over at uh, Indian Harbor Beach, 66 at the port, 67 in Merritt Island, 65 degrees Rockledge, and 72 now in Mims. Wider perspective showing 71 in Orlando, 66 in the Villages, 66 degrees in Ocala, and 64 in Palm Coast. It is a beautiful, beautiful Wednesday. But yes, those temperatures are on their way up. We're running 8 to 12, 13 degrees warmer in the metro area than we were this time yesterday, about five degrees warmer along the Space Coast. And checking in on the visible satellite imagery, there's just a couple of clouds off the shoreline. That's it. Nothing hardly over top of us. So it's a gorgeous day. Will be a gorgeous day all the way to about, uh, you know, 11.59. And then it's going to be a beautiful tomorrow. A great big beautiful tomorrow. First warning, live Doppler radar. Quiet this hour. Breeze coming in kind of out of the northeast. That's the reason that we're getting those warmer temperatures. Want to look all the way out to Texas, Louisiana, because by tomorrow, we start to watch this area of low pressure developing. It will, ahead of it, develop some moisture, too. And that is going to bring up rain chances for us just in time to welcome 2023 as well. New Year's Eve, showers, thunder showers, afternoon and evening, highs in the 80s. We're going to keep the showers overnight through early New Year's Day morning. So, yeah, may have to have the poncho as we welcome in 2023. 60% coverage of storms Saturday, the 80s returning, a few showers early on Sunday, and then looking wonderful and mild for back to work, back to school Monday. Looks good, Eric. Thank you. Can you believe we are weeks away from celebrating the life and legacy of Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.? And today we are taking a look at Central Florida's plans to honor the late civil rights leader. Martin Luther King Jr. Day is January 16th. Starting on Sunday, though, January 8th, there will be a candlelight vigil and march at City Hall here in Orlando and an interfaith multicultural celebration. The next day, Orlando Mayor Buddy Dyer, along with city council members, will officially proclaim the week as Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Holiday Week. Then on Thursday, January 12th, there will be a leadership forum at FAMU College of Law, then a luncheon on Friday, and of course, the parade on Saturday. Oviedo is also getting ready for its celebrations to honor the late civil rights icon. You're invited to the community prayer breakfast on January 7th at 9 o'clock in the morning. It'll be at Oviedo on the Park Amphitheater and it's free. Then Monday, January 16th, will be the Martin Luther King Jr. Parade. It starts at Oviedo High School that morning at 10 o'clock. I am so honored to be the Grand Marshal of this parade. It'll end at Round Lake Park for a family fun day. Be sure to and say hi. The neighborhood's encouraged to boil your water today. Plus, a woman is in custody after driving down a frozen canal and then crashing right through the ice. The charges she faces. Still ahead today at noon, a Florida police officer is off the job today. We have body camera video showing the moments leading up to that arrest. Plus, help for stranded flyers, what you need to know if you are stuck at the airport. But first, we are finally warming up across central Florida. Look at these temperatures. When you can expect to see even warmer conditions, we're talking back in the 80s. First warning meteorologist Eric Burris has that coming up. Local, live, late breaking. West 2 News starts now.
It is 1230 on your Wednesday afternoon. Thanks for watching us here at West 2 News at noon. We are warming up across central Florida after dealing with that freezing cold air we felt for days. First warning meteorologist Eric Burris is timing it all out for us. And today, Eric, it is a beautiful afternoon. Oh my gosh, it is It is uh, just gorgeous. We call this CAVU, which is clear uh, visibility altitude unlimited. It's gorgeous. Just nothing to see out there whatsoever. 71 degrees our current temperature in Orlando. It's 70 degrees in Titusville, 72 in Palm Bay. We're in the 60s for the villages and for Ocala. Look at the wider perspective. It's 60s all the way up the peninsula too. There is just a nice stable air mass. Our full forecast coming up in just a couple of minutes. All right, Eric, we will see you soon. Happening now in Osceola County, the sheriff's office really needs your help finding a missing 16 year old who's been gone for about a week now. Take a look at your screen. This is 16 year old Ladarian Frazier. His family says he left home in Kissimmee around three o'clock in the morning last Thursday. He was wearing a black hoodie with yellow letters on it and NBA logo pajama pants. If you see him, take another look. Call the sheriff's office at 407-348-2222. New details this afternoon about a Seminole County man in jail accused of shooting and killing his wife. Western News got a copy of the documents investigators used in this murder case. Those documents say on December 20th, investigators went to this apartment complex on Ballard Street in Altamont Springs. That's where they found 25-year-old Brandy Giles shot. More than two days later, investigators arrested her husband, Jonathan Giles, for second degree murder. The documents also state investigators said Brandy was still awake when they got there. She told them some men broke into the apartment, but investigators say they did not see any forced signs of entry. Some of Brandy's friends, according to the documents, also described her marriage as violent. They said Jonathan shot their couch in the living room when they were arguing. Jonathan is still in jail without bond. In Marion County this afternoon, fire investigators are trying to figure out what caused this deadly house fire. You're looking at video from the scene on Southwest 52nd Street in Ocala. This is where one woman died and another went to the hospital. Marion County Fire Rescue says they got the call just before 630 last night from a neighbor who was out walking their dog, saw these flames and also saw the daughter of the victim trying to get into the house to rescue her mother at my house and I heard my kids tell me that there was a fire. Um, we saw the smoke and it was raised above the development and it, it was engulfing, you know, you could see it from far. So we ran over it quick to see and we just saw flames just pouring out of the house. Mm. Both the Marion County Sheriff's Office and the fire marshal say they are both investigating. Still ahead today at noon, we are looking forward to some of the new additions at our theme parks. The new rides you can check out come the new year. And as we watch airports across the country and here in Orlando just flooded with frustrated passengers, what can you do if you need to rebook a flight? We have some helpful tips next. If you are Yes, it is still a mess at Orlando International Airport. 127 flights are canceled to and from OIA and 160 more are delayed. That's according to FlightAware. Most are with Southwest. This has been such a problem and now the federal government says it will investigate all of this. We are looking ahead to some new attractions coming to our theme parks here in Central Florida. This is really exciting. Next year is looking like it'll be great if you love all the thrills. Disney, Universal, and SeaWorld have some pretty big plans. One of the most anticipated is Tron Light Cycle Coaster. Look at this. It's going to make its debut at Magic Kingdom. The ride is a high-speed race taking place in the digital world, and it's based on the Disney sci-fi movie Tron Legacy. SeaWorld is also introducing Pipeline. This is the surf coaster we've been telling you about. It has a surfboard-shaped ride car, and it's going to have you hanging 10 and riding those waves. This will be, I think, the very first stand-up roller coaster that will have been built in 20-something years. So it'll be kind of interesting to see the evolution of that style of, of, of roller coasters. And also the company that, that, that's building it, you know, they've also built all of SeaWorld's, most of SeaWorld's other coasters, you know, Kraken, Mako, Manta, they all came from the same company. That is going to be so much fun. Universal also plans to release information about Illumination's villain con Minion Blast. They call this a Minions-themed land. Exciting times ahead in Central Florida.
Still ahead here on West 2, temperatures are warming back up across Central Florida. Look at those numbers. First warning meteorologist Eric Burris will join us in a few minutes with when we can expect the numbers to go up more. But first, we want to take you to Buffalo, New York. Look at what they are dealing with. These cleanup efforts continue after a deadly snowstorm. The heartbreaking new numbers released on how many people died. At West 2, each year we focus on telling your stories. Stories that inspire. It's a great feeling that you can do something for somebody to give back. Stories that we celebrate. Oh. Are you guys excited? Yeah. Stories that will impact you. A new severe thunderstorm warning has just been issued. Stories we investigate. Got to do something. We can't delay this kind of decisions. Stories that educate. People want to see all races and colors. We're going to stay on top of this. We didn't know if we had hours to get back to. Stories that bring us together. And lift off of Artemis 1. We rise together. Stories that help others. We hit our goal of $300,000. No matter the story told, it's your story. It's a privilege to be a part of this community and connect with you every day. Watch as the next story unfolds. West 2 News, local, live, late breaking. Cleanup efforts continue today in western New York, where sadly, more people die from this devastating storm. NBC's Jesse Kirsch is in Buffalo, where leaders are calling this the deadliest snowstorm in the city's history. States who were hard hit by that winter storm. We felt it here in Central Florida, right. Eric. Thankfully, though, we are warming up. Yeah, things are looking gorgeous in yeah. our area. The blow... Uh, can I try that again? Please. The blue sky. I was, I was trying to, I don't know where I was there. The blue skies You're are taken away us. from the blue sky. I'm, I'm completely aghast. Yeah, this is a look in Volusia County. The blue skies are here. Uh, but that same storm system is what brought us the sleet just down the shoreline in Brevard County. There is no precipitation out there right now uh, across Volusia. 69 at Oak Hill. It's 69 Spruce Creek. Daytona Beach Airport at 70 degrees. 70 degrees live updating there in Deland. 72 in Orange City and about 74 in Enterprise. Across the rest of town, 60s here for Ocala in the villages. We're at 71 in Orlando and 72 degrees in Palm Bay. It is beautiful. Our First warning visible satellite imagery showing a couple of clouds off the shoreline. Kind of trying to work on in over toward the Cape, but uh, that's not a problem at all. First warning live Doppler radar is rain free. So New Year's Eve showers around. Unfortunately, New Year's Day we will start with the showers and then little by little clear things out. Here's a look Central Florida certified most accurate seven day forecast. Lower 70s today, upper 70s tomorrow. We'll hit 80 with a few showers in there on Friday. New Year's Eve, 60% coverage of showers and thunder showers keeping that through New Year's Day and then Monday, Tuesday, not bad at all. Eric, thank you. My taste buds are dancing with this next story. Celebrity chef Emeril Lagasse is now chief culinary officer of Carnival Cruises. His restaurant concept, Emerald's Bistro, is already on two Carnival ships. Now you get to enjoy all of the Cajun and Creole cuisine fleet-wide. He will work with Carnival chefs on food trends and techniques, and you'll also see some of the iconic meals on the menu. Yum. Still ahead today at noon, you didn't win the jackpot, but you still need to check your Mega Millions tickets because there is one person in Florida who racked up big. We'll tell you how much, plus the jackpot, how much it's worth. And the ball will drop in Times Square in a matter of days, bringing in a new gear with a new look. We have a preview next. Closed captioning is sponsored by Subaru. Can you believe we are days away from the end of 2022? Many of you here in Central Florida will watch the ball drop from Times Square at midnight. Look at the 12,000 pound crystal ball. It features more than 2,800 crystal triangles and this year crews are replacing nearly 200 of them. It's because they have a new design called Gift of Love. Every year we bring a different message, you know, gift of peace, gift of love, gift of friendship. But I think love is so important, not only for our, you know, friends, family, our loved ones, but for the whole world. Celebrations officially start at 6 o'clock Saturday night in Times Square. When the ball drops at midnight, you can watch it right here on WESH 2. He famously turned Arnold Schwarzenegger into the Terminator, but now director James Cameron appears to be backing away from some on-screen violence. David Daniel tells us why. 
One person here in Florida is a million dollars richer after almost getting the Mega Millions jackpot. Just so close. The Florida Lottery says one ticket matched all five numbers but missed the Mega Ball. That means the pot is now up to $640 million. The next drawing is on Friday. Good luck. Let's get a check of our forecast before we head out with first warning meteorologist Aaron Burris. It is a beautiful afternoon. It is beautiful. Here's a look over at the tourist district. Our tower cam showing a mainly clear sky. Temperatures in the upper 60s for Kissimmee, lower 70s in the metro, and about the same scattered throughout town. So we'll watch the sun shining. Lower 70s are highs, and then we'll drop off gradually from there down to about 54 tonight. Milder, nearly 80 degrees tomorrow. We'll get to the 80s by the weekend, but know this, Christina, we've got showers, even thunder showers in the forecast for New Year's Eve and New Year's Day. All right, typical Central Florida. Eric, thank you. Thank you for spending your afternoon with us. We'll see you right back here for Western News at 4. Until then, you can always get the latest online and on our free mobile app. West 2 first warning weather and traffic gets you moving in the right direction. Whether it's planning your forecast or analyzing the best routes for your commute. From rainy skies to bumper to bumper. Start your day with us because our day starts with you.